Hello and welcome to CAD Chaos. Today I'm going to be going over how to transfer whole locations from one part to another within the assembly. Now in this assembly here I have set up I have a uh, base frame and a cover plate that goes on top of it. Now on the base frame I have dimensioned in a whole bunch of these quarter 20 holes and I'm going to be putting flat heads in the cover plate. Now from a design aspect, usually the fasteners are one of the last things that I'm worried about. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to dimension in a whole lot of holes early on in the design process and then have to come in and re-dimension and move all those holes over and over and over again. So I tend to kind of lean towards where do I want my holes in the base frame and putting a lot of time into dimensioning those and then when I transfer it to something like a cover plate which is a slightly less priority than the base frame um, I'm gonna use a faster method of transferring these holes so this is where that you might find this trick here that I'm about to show you quite useful alright so I've gone ahead and I've suppressed that whole wizard feature here so how do I want to do this I want to come over here to my cover plate and the first thing I want to do is I want to suppress the mate that is coincident to the top of this base frame which is this mate here coincident six and that's gonna allow me to drag this away from the base plate and that's gonna give me some freedom to move my mouse and work the features so now I want to right click on my cover plate and I'm gonna say edit part now I'm gonna go over to features a whole wizard and this is where I'm gonna pick my flathead that I want to use in this case I already have it set up it's gonna be a quarter loose because I'm not worried about the uh, not too worried about the size at this point. And now I'm going to go over to points and I'm just going to click on whatever face that I want it to start with. Um, I'll end up deleting that point later. Now for this we're going to be using kind of a, a quick snap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover the mouse over the quarter 20 hole that I want the uh, clearance hole to line up with and you'll notice that there's going to be a little a circle with a plus inside of it and then you're just going to take your mouse and you're going to aim it towards where you saw that plus and then you click there and now you have a coincident mate on that point to the hole that you were hovering over just a second ago. So with that in mind all you got to do is hover over each of your holes, point towards the plus and then click. And then you'll do this for every hole that you have. Now obviously there are other ways of dimensioning holes and you can dimension them to certain datums and whatnot so that they can uh, stretch and match the base frame and whatnot. It all does take a little bit of time and uh, a good amount of planning to get it to work just right. But one advantage of this system here is that when you have to add a whole bunch more new holes, that this is it, it allows you to flexibly add new holes um, quite easily. Although there are, again, other ways, linear patterns and whatnot that are equally as effective and maybe a little bit more organized. So now that I have the location for all those I'm going to head and click OK and I've now created a feature of for, with a whole wizard so now I have all those parts I have clearance holes. So I'm going to exit out of my edit component I'm going to unsuppress that mate and you'll notice that these are now lining up. Now for me I don't really like these I don't like coincident mates on features and stuff inside one part relating to another part because to me that sounds a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. I like my part to be to stand alone um, so that if something does change on the base frame, if there's a big change, that it's not going to then change on the cover plate because then things could start changing that I wouldn't know about and you don't, you don't want that to happen. You want to be detailed and understand what's going on in your model at all times. So I then go into my cover plate here and the process for this is just I'm going to open this up, I'm going to fly it out and now I'm going to go to the sketch with all the points in there. And now I'm going to hit edit that sketch and you'll notice when you click on one of these points you're going to get a coincident mate and it shows you coincident mate and then it gives you a little point arrow to so it's kind of based on magic if you're looking from just a just at this part. You have no idea how that's really defined in its location. So I like to go in here and actually remove that mate. 
So I'm going to click on all these points to make sure not to actually physically move the location of the point because I don't want it to become misaligned from the uh, base frame. And I'm going to go through here, I'm going to click on all these mates, and I'm just going to delete them. Now I will come back through here. There's uh, two quick ways of dimensioning these, and that is to either anchor them down, which would be this little make fixed, or what I like to do is I like to right click, go down to fully define sketch, say all entities in sketch, click OK, and that's going to throw in some dimensions from some common datums, and you then have the location of all these holes defined in a way that you can then understand. So when we go back to the part here, we've now transferred holes from the base frame to the cover plate and we created some geometry that we could then understand and the two are not related to each other anymore. So if I were to stretch this base frame again, Let's say I was to make it two inches longer. You'll notice that these holes on the cover plate here will not move um, from their original location. So now, I mean, that's some pros and cons to the system, but that is one way of transferring holes easily from a base frame or from one part to another, in this case, from the base frame to the cover plate. So if you found this helpful and um, you like what you've seen, go ahead and subscribe, comment, like. Um, yeah, ask me what, you're, what you'd like to see a tutorial on. I'm always open for recommendations. And I will upload new videos from every week to bi-weekly. Thanks for watching.